if the police didn't arrive when they did, would he be dead? On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. Look, he's frightened with us trying to get him out. You have to have your wits about you because I've got really sharp calls. They try and bite you, of course. They're trying to get away. They don't know we're trying to help them. Can't even hear you. You're distressed. Oh, oh, hello. There's someone out there that's probably looking for him. At number five today. It's not a call you get every day. We've just been called out to a dog that's been stuck in a fence. Now, it's apparently been there for a little while. Police rescue at the scene is trying to get it out. A neighbour tipped off police about the emergency. So he's trying to jump through these things here. Yep. Um, he's about a mess, that's all his blood. He's been hanging there for a while. Do we know who this is? Okay. This is Woody. Woody, okay. This is incredible. Woody's been hanging at the window by his back legs. To me, it looks like he's tried to escape and actually got stuck by his back legs. Now, if the police didn't arrive when they did, Woody'd be dead. So front ways out. Yeah, front ways out. Yeah. Where was he stuck? About. So still these ones. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. I'll get to those in a second. I just want to check out the front half here. In Woody's desperation to get out that window, he's worn down pretty much his entire dew claw, and that's where that blood's come from. But to do that sort of damage, he must have been hanging there for hours. Oh Woody, what have you done to yourself, buddy? Chris is concerned Woody may have suffered brain damage from hanging upside down for so long. He may have other internal injuries as well, which we don't know about yet. A steroid injection is administered to help boost Woody's blood pressure. I really hope this works, because if we can't manage to get more blood back to Woody's heart, his whole circulation is going to collapse. I hate to say it, if that happens, he just won't make it. When he found him, he was actually hanging completely out of the window, quite by his hind legs. Um, police rescue has actually cut, had to cut the bars out. And he's been like this the whole time since we've been here. Woody's shocked owner, Shannon, arrives home to find his best friend fighting for life. Oh my God. I imagine he's been hanging upside down for quite a while too, which oh. is going to yeah. play around with his circulation. The steroid injection has helped boost Woody's blood pressure and his circulation is beginning to stabilise. But his legs are OK? Well, his left foreleg is a bit stiff and, and you can see he's oh, holding no, up. No, no, that, that, uh, that's hit by a car two years ago. That uh, explains that. No one had me worried. Shannon's telling me this story about how Woody lost the use of his leg two years ago in a car accident. Yeah. And I'm here thinking, how much bad luck can one dog have? But I'm just hoping Woody's got enough strength to pull himself through this time too. Yeah, OK. Do you normally a good guard dog? No, not at all. <laughs> it's not a guard dog at all. See Woody help us, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in shock and, and horrified. I just... Uh, he's part of the family. I mean, we all love him. I don't know what's going to happen. I just don't know what's going to happen. Just checking for internal bleeding. That's for him. Chris clears Woody of internal bleeding, but brain damage could still be an issue. Yeah, the pupil is, is responding to that. Now, that's showing that he is at least detecting light. So he's not only making out light, he's also making out shapes and, and movement, which is good. So just to counter that dehydration, we're going to run this bag of fluids yep. into a circulation, not too quickly, otherwise we might overwhelm it again. I really need to check out whether he's fractured those, those yeah. femurs or yeah, dislocated his hips. At this stage, the plan is to take him back to the, the vets. Come on, There you go, buddy. Poor Woody, he's in so much pain and all I'm thinking is just hang on mate, just hang on. It's alright mate, it's okay. Been through a lot mate, I know. Chris is rushing Woody back to the Bondi clinic. The dog was found hanging upside down out of a window. Correct and right? Yeah, straight up on that table there. 
X-rays will show if the dog has sustained internal injuries or serious fractures. X-ray. The reason I'm taking so many X-rays is that I need to be absolutely sure that Woody's okay. A normal dog might be able to handle the long-term effects of a broken leg or dislocated hips, but Woody's only got three legs. He can't afford to lose any more mobility. If the results of these X-rays are bad, you'd have to question his quality of life. Hardest part of the night, what do you promise you, mate? No. Your dog's lucky. Nothing. His hips are in place. Okay. No fractures of the femurs. His kneecaps are sitting perfectly. Woody's ordeal is almost over. Sorry about that, Woody. I guess it's only now when you get a chance to actually breathe that you realise just what Woody's been through tonight. It's all, buddy. It's okay, mate. Do what's comfortable, mate. Oh, there you go. He must have just been so close to death when that neighbour saw him, and thank God they did, and they made the call, and we got him out. Incredible night. Don't take on those bars, all right? Definitely don't fit through those. Woody? What's going on, buddy? What are you doing? Woody looks so much better this morning. You gonna get up? Considering he spent two hours hanging upside down out of a window, his progress is just remarkable but I'm not going to be totally comfortable unless he has another 24 hours under observation in here, just to be sure. Let's see how you walk. As for the accident-prone Woody, he's Woody. also on the way home. I said walk, not run, Woody. Jeez. And for the first hey. time, Chris can see just how he manages on Woody. three legs, a legacy I'm of a so previous car accident. Now, Woody, we have a tip for the future. Doors, that's how you leave buildings, all right? might just recognise this place. Hey, hey, hey. Bit of a difference, huh? It's just relief and, and joy, knowing that, that everyone's going to be happy in the family that Woody survived, and he's just fantastic. You Thanks. can see it, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's so good to finally see Woody running around on those three legs, almost as if nothing ever happened. It was touch and go there for a while, but in a way, his spirit got him into this but it's also what got him out of it as well. Number four. In Bondi. Does anyone want to hear that bird, the budgie sound? Kate now has an unexpected visitor. Like it's intermittent, like it literally is maybe every five minutes, there's a squeak out A little here. chirpy noise. Oh, that was it? Did you hear that? <laughs> yes. You hear I'm not going crazy. There's a budgie in there. <laughs> yes, I am. I just heard it. It's not unusual to have a bird in the clinic, but uh, we're used to having bird sounds. But we don't have a bird in the clinic today. It sounds like it's in between the two buildings. And the, the buildings, they're only like this far apart, yeah. so maybe it can't quite spread its wings to get... To get back out. Someone's going to get in there. <laughs> you know the upstairs, From what upstairs are we trying down. to look down? Do you have time? Yes. Okay, let's go. Kate and Vet Sam are intrigued to find out exactly where the mysterious bird is hiding. Okay, there's yeah. a budgie. Oh my gosh, it's a white budgie. <laughs> He's actually caught in between the two buildings. So we're not sure if potentially he just can't fly and he can't actually get himself out. To me, he actually looks like he's tame and I bet you he's lost. There's someone out there that's probably looking for him. He's got like a little blue tail and he's all white. The area to get in there is quite small. Yeah. And maybe he hasn't, can't quite get his wings open to get back through. So if we scoot there, because we can fit down at the bottom, so we could probably get in between the buildings, but we probably might need a net. This is going to be like Dr. Sam and Kate versus Budgie. Oh, he heard you. 
if we go that way, if we get through the bottom window, mm -hmm. right, on the first, the bottom floor, yes. go through the bottom window, if we walk to go towards him, he may just fly away. Right. If we get him all the way down there, and then we're going to get him stuck. We can catch him. Okay. I honestly don't think that any of us are going to get through this. Yeah. In Bondi, Kate's on a mission to rescue a budgie that's struggling to fly out of a narrow space between two buildings. Look what I've got. I do like these because it's like a treat. Yes. So I feel like he might come to this. Oh, maybe. Kate and Vet Sam hoping a sweet treat will help lure the little bird to safety. Hey, buddy. And are you sure there's no entry on that? From, not from the ground. From upstairs, it's around about this narrow. The bottom floor, it's actually about this wide. So we could possibly get a person in between the two buildings. Well, they nip pretty hard if they're scared. I feel like as though he's probably tame, so maybe we don't need this, but I feel like, as Sam said, it's, I'm gonna get bitten if yeah. he's really scared. Kate's embarking on one of the more unusual tasks she's had to perform as a vet. Oh my God, there's so many spiders in here. You okay? I don't. Okay, there's, there's gonna be rats too. Oh God, I can actually fit through here. I have a feeling as I approach him, he's gonna actually go down the end. But what I'm most concerned about is there's definitely gonna be rats and a whole lot of spiders in here. I managed to haul my backside out the window and... Hey! With Kate slowly inching closer, the budgie's now managed to jump up onto the window ledge. Hey! Would you like some snacks? Hey, buddy. Come on, get the snacks. Oh, dear. He's having troubles. I think he's owned you guys and he's, um, his wings are clipped, I'd say. He's definitely going to be someone's pet. And I thought, he's lost. There's someone out there that's probably looking for him. So, hey, buddy, want this? Oh my gosh, there's so many spiders in here. Come on. Come on, you naughty. Come on. He's now gone into an area that I actually can't fit. So we're going to need a new plan. I've had to abort mission. Um, you can see behind me that the building gets thinner as it actually moves towards the road. So I've gotten to a point that I may potentially get stuck if I go any further and he has flown all the way up. Kate's going to need some high-tech equipment for plan B. He's on top of the wall. So I'm gonna try and use this broom stick and hopefully he gets on the end of the broomstick. I'm gonna take some seeds. Who knows what's gonna work? He might run away. Here you go, buddy. Well, there he goes. He's off. That's the end. He must have been having trouble actually getting his wingspan full flight, so he couldn't actually get up onto the brick wall. But once he was up, he seemed to have found his way and he's found his little way through the little small brick wall. And he's off. This week's number three. He's pulled up behind the motor. Nearby Coogee, the police search and rescue squad has been called out to help a trapped cat. My doorbell went about one o'clock this morning. I jumped out of bed and went to the front door and there were two policemen. And they said there was a little kitten under the bonnet of my car and was very, very distressed. I'm so grateful the neighbours did hear the little kitten because it, you know, if I'd come up in the morning and it was still there and I didn't know and I started the car, I, I mean, it, it would have hurt it. It could have even killed it, I imagine. It, it just would have been horrific if something had happened to it. Come on. Can you grab him from there? Are you able to grab him? But just when the rescuers finally get their hands on the feisty kitten, it takes off into the bushes. Somewhere here, in the vicinity. So with Aileen leading the search, the neighbours have all joined in. Can you hear him? Come on, little one. Come on. Come on. We're going to look after you. Come on, where are you? He's frightened with us trying to get him out. I'm worried he'll come out and he'll just run across the road again and there's so much traffic. He could get hit with a car. 
Puss. Gotcha. Hey, hey, Puss. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is back at work. You looked after him so well last night. Outside, Good Samaritan Aileen is on her way to see him with grandsons Declan and Logan and a furry fugitive. Explain to me how you have... How we have this dear little kitten? Well, uh, it was early hours of Sunday morning. Two policemen rang my doorbell to say he was under the bonnet of my car. But he escaped. Cross Carrington Road, which is a very busy road, so he's, he's used up one of his lives, I feel. <laughs> and he hid in the garden all night. So eventually enticed him out about 12 midday. Yeah. It's a big weekend for a little girl. Very guy. big weekend, yeah. And the boys happened to be staying overnight, so they were there to help Grandma look after him, weren't you? Have you noticed he keeps on turning around and licking? So I'm just wondering if he might have some fleas. He does. Is it? What do you reckon this gets rid of? The thing yes. gas. <laughs> if only it was that simple. <laughs> With the fleas treated, Chris then worms and vaccinates the runaway. Look at that. There you go. That was like you had, wasn't it? The most important thing before anyone gets too attached, mm -hmm. which might be a little bit too late, <laughs> uh, we should probably check it for a bucket chip. Did you hear a beep? When you reckon that means? Chris now needs to notify the council and local animal shelter. It'll be a week before Aileen can take the kitten home. So are you okay to wait a few days before you take him home? <laughs> For five-year-old Logan, a week is a very long time. He'll be all right, Logan, but Dr Chris is going to look after him. <laughs> I think it would be heartbreaking to not keep him now. And I have been thinking about getting another cat, so... Yes, maybe it was fate. I almost hope no one comes to collect him. Because you look at Logan and Declan, they've already become so attached, they'll be devastated if they have to give up their new little buddy. Mate, how did you get across here? Look at it. Madness. One week later, and nobody's claimed the runaway kitten. It's the last time you ever crossed this road. So Chris is delivering a very special parcel mm -hmm. to some very happy boys. Hey. Dr Chris, Declan, look who's here. here. Look who's here. Isn't he beautiful? Hey. Do you want hold. to hold him, Logan? Remember how to hold him? Oh, you're good. Oh, very good. You dear little fellow, aren't you? Oh, I'm very happy to have him. Very happy to have him. It's just nice to have that other little heartbeat in the house. And the boys will love coming over to see him. I'll leave you the task of taming. <laughs> yes, yes, all life. right. I, I'll do my best. No <laughs> Thank worries. you for bringing him to us. Number two. I heard of a lady called the Wallaby Woman. And apparently she is all about rescuing and relocating wallabies. So I'm on my way to meet her. In Queensland, Scott's working holiday road trip has brought him to tropical Cairns, where a wildlife crisis is unfolding. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. You must be Shane. Yeah, it's nice to oh, meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Who is this? This little is little kid. Freddy. Oh, my God. Our agile wallaby, and you're just in time for a little joey play date and we're about to start feeds. Oh my gosh, I'm well in. That sounds amazing. Come on in. Thank you. Little Freddy still needs his bottle. Oh my gosh. Everyone. It's is... like cuteness exploded in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this must be the best part of your volunteering job. Definitely. 24-year-old Shay leads the Agile Project a team of 160 volunteers dedicated to saving local wallabies trapped by rapidly growing housing development. I always say I was raised next to joeys or alongside them. My mum was a wildlife carer. She was a single parent to two children. 
but also we just lived in a madhouse. <laughs> I remember doing snake relocations, we did cassowaries, we did of course wallabies. My mum was a little bit sick growing up and so, you know, if she was to go into hospital it would be left to my brother and I to take care of the animals and I think that really put a lot of responsibility on us but I do think it's made me the person I am today. Why? are they being looked after by you guys right now? Yeah, I think that's where the situation gets pretty grim. Uh, a lot of these, the majority of their mums have been hit by cars. Some have been killed by dogs off lead. We try and get them back out into the wild, just not right here where they're from because suburban area has taken over their land. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Coming down to these fields and seeing the wallabies in situ, you really feel for them. They are just squashed into this really degraded area, not well looked after at all. So these guys here are called agile wallabies. And this mob, I mean, you can see there's oh, probably a good few hundred of them. And the problem here is that they're actually refugees. The plight of wallabies in this particular area is 100% as a result of human development. You've got development and sports fields on all sides and then at the escape route you've got a huge highway so these animals have been crushed into a small space not thought about not considered and the only way to escape is along the main road so they're getting killed in their hundreds every year and these guys really need some help Hi there, Joel. How are you going? I'm Scott. Hey, hey Scott. How are you hey. going? Nice to nice meet, to meet you. you. Yeah. Wow, this is a sad picture to see, isn't it? Yeah, that was one of this morning's casualties. Uh, Nearby, wildlife rescuer Joel has found the latest fatality. Uh, adult female with a, a pinky that survived the car strike. You see the blood on the highway. You said that she had a, a pinky, a, a baby wallaby in her pouch. What's the future for that animal? Unfortunately, this one is too small to survive in care. There's the human care for an animal under 160 grams. They just are not successful. So that animal was taken to the vet and euthanized this morning. It's pretty shocking. It's a daily thing for our volunteers to deal with. All kangaroos and wallabies are gorgeous. They are beautiful, iconic creatures. And we need to remind ourselves what is a pest and what is a native animal. This road's busy and unfortunately this is two lives lost. Yes, yes. With one collision. Yeah. And this, is, this happens every day on the northern beaches up here. How does that make you feel? Oh, I'm the guy that maps and does the data for it, so I feel horrible. Um, it's pretty, you know, it's, yeah, it's just tough to see that. It just, they deserve better. They really do. The work of these volunteers is never ending, and Shay has called Scott to help deal with an emergency situation. So what you got? Well, I've just got Joel on the phone now. We're looking at a paddy melon, and I would love some help with a rescue if you're keen. Yeah, absolutely. No paddy melons are small marsupials in the same family as kangaroos and wallabies. We'll be there as soon as we can. Let's right, go. Let's go. Shay's described her home area as the death spot of wallabies in Australia. But rather than just accept the status quo, she is fighting the man and she's actually taken the Queensland government to court over her ability to relocate animals rather than just simply shoot them. She's represented herself in court, she won, and she has now proven that you can move macropods from one place to the other and that is an absolutely amazing achievement. So is it to the left or right of the bin? It's not very often that Shay gets to have a vet on call with her, so it's great to be of use. I can assess the animal and if it's okay, we can release it straight away without having to go into a vet clinic and all the stress associated with it. So, we've got a good team here. Yeah. If it comes past you, don't hesitate, grab it by the base of the tail. When we do capture the animals, it looks a little bit funny. We grab them by the base of the tail. Now that's the equivalent to scruffing a kitten. It's not going to hurt them, it's the safest for them and us because we get to turn those vicious legs away from us. <laughs> the other person who's hands-free 
gets the sleeping bag and puts the wallaby in, and then Dr. Scott can assess from there. Okay. Shay gives me a very quick uh, version of catching a macropod. It's basically grab it by the base of the tail and hold it up and hope that it doesn't kick you in the face or bite you. You don't think about it, you just go. Just, just go. do it. Yeah. Don't, don't think, just do. Okay, let's go. It's gonna come out here. Yeah. Oh, I'm coming out. Bag yeah, get it stuck. Nice. Great work. All right. Face the tail. You're okay to hold it? Wow. You got it? Shay goes in like an Amazon and just catches this patty melon single handedly. This girl is incredible. Wow. Like she takes no prisoners, she just takes wallabies. <laughs> just wallabies. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's three grown men standing there watching Shay in all her glory just completely lady handle this patty melon. It's really impressive. I'll hold the base of the tail so you can assess. That's all right, darling. Yeah, so I'm just looking for any injuries, anything external that would explain why this guy's here. Um, but so far, not finding anything. In these kind of situations, we really just don't know what the outcome will be. If it's got a broken leg or a really severe injury, it does mean that we will have to euthanize it. To be honest, a lot of these cases end like that. So really hoping it's not that situation. So let me just have a look at his head. If I can get him, there we go. All right, yes. Hi, it's okay, it's all right, we're here to help. It's all right. All right, he's really struggling with. I'm gonna go get the vitamin E. Can you someone yeah. hold his tail? Okay. Macropod, which pretty much means big foot. That involves kangaroos, paddy melons, wallabies, are quite susceptible to myopathy. Now, this is essentially death that can be caused by stress. But Dr. Scott has got some medication on hand that will reverse the stress. So what do you think, Shay? I mean, he seems yep. pretty healthy. If you've cleared him, then yeah. I think what's happened is he's accidentally got himself trapped. So we've helped remove him from the situation, which is really good, because if he would have come out this way later tonight, chances are he would have got hit by a car. So I think we go for a bit of a walk into the deep bush. He knows this area and we can let him go. Wow, this is virgin rainforest now. <laughs> it is, it's pretty perfect here, away from everything. Nice clear spot for him. Yeah. Great release that. So, ready to release? Yep, this is a clear space. All right, okay, so you just lift off and then... Okay, ready, ready. There you go, off you go. Good. Ooh. There you go. Perfect. Oh, he's, he's great. Back where he's from. I'm feeling inspired and amazing. We've managed to relocate an animal that needed us and release it back into the wild. Rescue one life at a time. Yeah, huh? <laughs> good work. <laughs> yes. Come on, team. Nice one. This release is just a warm up, with all hands on deck required early tomorrow morning to help with a massive capture and relocation operation. I am so excited to channel my energy into something really positive, joining this team of wildlife warriors as they scurry around at two o'clock in the morning, capturing as many wallabies as possible. I literally cannot wait. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Back at Trinity Beach, it's 2 a.m. and Scott is meeting up again with wildlife rescuer Shay and her team to try to capture and relocate as many wallabies as possible. So everybody knows the traps I'll be setting this morning. I'll take Dr. Scott. The aim is to get in and out as quick as possible. It's really exciting, you know, it's very quiet and very still at the moment, but I appreciate from what Shay's been saying that the energy starts really pumping and the adrenaline gets going when the animals are going into the traps. All right, All right, we'll so what have we got here? Heaps of sweet potato, which is like healthy wallaby chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> they love it and we'll go set the traps. And that is our ton of sweet potato that we order wow. in order to do this. <laughs> wow. The wallabies will be lured into special traps so they can be safely transported away from the busy housing development. And we've got pre-chopped sweet potato. And we're going to give them enough that if one was to get caught quite quickly, they have a really great time eating their little pieces. Now we zip it up. So this is where we're going to unzip it 
when we when come out. When they're captured, yeah. Yep, so we just go, jump, jump, jump. Grab. Grab. Lift. Yep. Bag. Bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they like to boing out, try and grab a mid-air. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it feels like it's going to be quite frantic, like this is the calm before the wallaby storm. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it's also weird because we don't speak, so it's all frantic in silence. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But the only thing about tonight is it still seems pretty hot. Yes, it is a little bit warm. So 26 degrees and under is a safe space for these wallabies. If it gets above 26 degrees, that's when we cease operations. So when you're trying to remove wallabies from an area, of course they're going to get stressed. And they get even more heat stressed when it's hot. Right. What it, temperature is it now? It is 26, but it is dropping and then okay. going back up. Wow. So, so yeah. we've got a little limited window of opportunity here to get these wallabies yeah, rescued and out. Absolutely, and I think that's why we go, go, go and just don't stop as soon as we start capture because yeah. it really is a timely matter. We cannot go ahead if it is 26 degrees or above, so that's why the pressure's hey, on. Wow, I'm feeling it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you'll be feeling it soon with the sweat as well. So just drop that one, make sure it drops perfectly. Yeah. Great. Right, so now we've set our two traps. How long should we expect that it'll take for a wallaby to jump on in? Yeah, these back ones, they love these ones. So they're our go-to spots, sometimes five minutes, but they do have a whole hour to come in. So we check them on the hourly. So in one hour's time, we'll be back out here, probably pulling a nice big boy from this trap. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> I'm excited and nervous yeah. in equal measure. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Well, Shay and I have just finished setting all the traps with the team uh, and the good news is that the temperature is coming down. So it's now gone down to 24 degrees. So we are ready to go. The light is green. And it isn't long before the first traps produce results. All right, this will be the first capture, guys. Everyone feeling okay? Yeah. All right, let's go. Somebody walk, got base to all right, let's go team. They fly on in and they grab these animals and yes, it looks you know rough, but what we're doing is bringing them somewhere where they can be safe and be free and that's what it's all about. Dr. Scott, do you want to get this one? Yep. As soon as each wallaby is captured, Scott's ready with sedation and vitamin E to alleviate any stress. Okay, done. You have to have your wits about you because they've got really sharp claws. They try and bite you, of course. They're trying to get away. They don't know we're trying to help them. Got him. Okay. Nice. Yep. But you can just feel the passion and you can feel the love of these young people. They are amazing. And I, I feel just so blessed to be a part of them tonight. Oh, he's really big, really strong, very heavy. Scott's also making sure any mature females are given a thorough pouch check. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, a little jelly bean. tiny little baby. Oh, a couple of days old. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. Two lives saved. Two lives for one. Well done everyone. <laughs> That's amazing. All right team, we're going to head back out straight away. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, so fast and furious now. The, the team have just got another one and I've got another one. So it's uh, it's been a great haul in the end. So right at the last minute we've managed to save a whole bunch of agile wallabies. The sun's just coming up over there, so you know that the heat's gonna come with it and that's why we need to move. The wallabies will now be taken to a safe area, well away from housing and busy roads. So that's it, sun's up, we're ready to go to release site. We've got eight and four babies and that was an incredible effort team. Yeah, well done everyone, Great that's job. awesome. So that's very precious cargo right there. Come on then, let's get moving. Ah, oh, and relax. Knowing that in the back you've got eight wallabies and four joeys in their pouches is, is not standard, but it's magical, really. We always say if they were to die and go to wallaby heaven, this is probably where they'd end up. It is completely away from cars, dogs, and roads, and has a massive acreage system that also backs onto National Park. Any order except leave that last one to the end with the joey. One by one, each team member gets to release a wallaby into its new home. Wow, that was good, wasn't it? Ready? Now he's 
fun. <laughs> See? Oh, oh, oh. She gone. Okay. <laughs> there she goes. This is that big heavy boy. It's gonna hopefully lead this mob into a bright future. Very happy boy. He is very happy. Amazing. You know, these are creatures that deserve our respect and the fact that we've been able to bring them out here and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this guy's just confidently hopped away to his new future. It just feels so good. A healthy little Joey there still in the yep. pouch. Mum and baby are very relaxed together, twitching from dreaming. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Right, and well done you. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> rescued all these lives. Hey. That's good. Good That's mama. Hey, well done everyone. Good job. Well done. Yeah. Well done. That was great. That's amazing. Now to bed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's, it's exhilarating, isn't it? It is, it I is. I can see why you do it. Yes, you almost want to cheer, be like, oh, don't be quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment that you get to open up that bag and watch the wallaby run away is just Sigh of relief, it's done and it's probably the most incredible part of the whole journey. And this week's number one. Hi, how are you? Come in, come in. Let's have a look. Um, they're upstairs, yep. so it's all the way up to the third floor. Chris has been called out okay by Barry that? from Wires um, Wildlife Rescue nephew, to help Jonathan? a stranded family. She doesn't like me being here, she's keeping a very close eye. A mother duck and her nine newly hatched ducklings are trapped on a third floor balcony. Like There's no food, water or protection from predators. Sooner or later someone's going to have to feed them. And I don't know what to feed them so that I'd ring you guys. <laughs> oh, here we go. A bit of eggshell there, but look at this. A nest. Oh, amazing. So they've obviously hatched out here and not popped up here. Yeah. And jump down there and still not hurt themselves and still not hurt themselves it's very common for ducks to decide to have their eggs by a swimming pool and then try to raise the ducklings in the swimming pool but you very rarely see it three or four above a swimming pool she's got close but not quite close enough there's only one place for them to go and that's three floors down and i don't think they're going to survive that fall without shade the ducklings will quickly dehydrate and die thanks barry so let's get it comes with the side of the, of the net. The family needs an urgent change of address. I'll come in from here and from above. Okay, good. Okay. It's got to hope a maternal instinct takes over and she doesn't want to get away from us. Chris is closing in on the mother duck and her nine ducklings trapped on a third story balcony. It's critical to catch mum first, so she doesn't fly off and abandon her babies. Good one. After a struggle, Chris secures the mother. It's all right. It's all right. But she's not quite finished yet. She had a fair bit of fight. Obviously the kids aren't really, you know, wearing her out just yet. Big hands can be very handy. <laughs> the anxious mother and ducklings are now off to the Bondi Clinic for a health check. You can see just how far away they are from, from flying. That's their wing. It's tiny. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is giving the noisy ducklings one last examination. Chris rescued the nine newborns and their mother from their dangerous home on a high-rise balcony. They're so small, they are very vulnerable, and they're going to need to swim and, and run away from predators and going to have to keep up with mum. I think your legs are working okay, aren't they? Mum's quite confused. You can hear her just making a few little noises, almost talking to her babies, just saying, guys, you're okay, I can hear you, you're just stressed. Ooh. 
Oh, hello. And each time she makes a noise, they make a louder one back. Just keep it down a notch. Hmm? When Chris gets mum out, she's not happy. What was I saying? Hey, hey, strong, eh? Just feeling it there, she's actually in pretty good condition. The mother duck is ready to take her brood back to the wild, but there are no guarantees about their future. I am actually a little bit nervous about the release. Sure, they're fit, they're healthy, they're ready to go, but the harsh reality is I can't really control what happens out there in that pond. They are going to need some luck. Let's hope they've got it. Yeah, pretty spot. Beautiful. A fair bit of cover and so on. Yeah, so if they don't really like in the water, they can always come out. Sure, yeah. Chris and Barry from Wires are at a park to return the rescued ducks to the wild. What's good about this is that it's not too overpopulated with birds. There are no predators of theirs, so all the species here are pretty placid. They should welcome our new additions with open arms. Oh, that's their first ever time they've been in water and they're amazing swimmers. It's incredible, isn't it? So now it's the moment of truth as Chris anxiously watches the new residents settle in. Oh, a bit of a scuffle. Oh, jeez. They're actually attacking them. Hey. Jeez. They're actually attacking them. At the lake, Chris is facing his worst nightmare. The mother is under attack and her ducklings are left defenceless. Hey! There's obviously a massive territorial battle going on. The worry is that one of those bigger ducks will actually have a go at one of the ducklings and one good peck could really seriously damage one of those ducklings or even kill it. Should they try to drown it? Give them something back though. The mother duck is fighting for her family. Go mum. Adopted a bit of a defensive position for her. All of a sudden, the attack ends. Amazingly, several other adult ducks have stepped in to help protect the newcomers. For some reason, they've bonded with her instantly and, you know, they're really helping her out. It's good to see. It just shows you just how strong her maternal instincts is. She's willing to fight as strong as she possibly can just to protect them. For those ducklings, she's the best ally they could ever hope for. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.